From calling out sexism to doing calligraphy for the stars, there's way more to Meghan Markle than all that royal drama. In a September 2022 episode of Meghan Markle's podcast, Archetypes, she chatted with actress Mindy Kaling about their experiences as teens. Looking at Markle now, you wouldn't expect her to have struggled with self-esteem growing up. But according to Meghan, she did experience confidence issues and had trouble making friends, even calling herself an ugly duckling. Markle told Kaling that she never had anyone to sit with at lunch, so to try to solve that problem and find her place, Meghan joined several clubs, including the Multicultural Club, the French Club, as well as becoming the president of her sophomore class. By joining all these clubs and having frequent lunchtime meetings, she could avoid the cafeteria drama. So I didn't have to worry about who I would sit with or what I would do because I was always so busy. The Duchess further revealed that she didn't feel like she fit the beauty standard of the time. In her words, her massive frizzy curly hair and the huge gap in her teeth relegated her to the position of the smart one, not the pretty one. Most people know about Meghan Markle's acting career, but before her acting took off, she worked as a calligrapher. For People, she worked in the Beverly Hills stationery store Paper Source. The company's CEO, Winnie Park, told People, It was her part-time job as she was going through auditions. She taught calligraphy and hosted a group of customers and instructed them during a two-hour class on how to do calligraphy. Meghan continued to offer freelance calligraphy services after moving on from her job at the stationery store. Some of her freelance clients? Robin Thicke and Paula Patton. Patton told Entertainment Tonight that she hired Meghan to write her wedding invitations before she married Thicke in 2005. Patton told E.T., She had this beautiful writing. That moment, I feel like I said something to her, like, you are meant to be royal. She was just so graceful and lovely and actually really kind. In addition to teaching calligraphy, Meghan offered instructional classes on bookbinding and gift wrapping. It's safe to assume her Christmas presents are works of art. The TIG was where Meghan Markle wrote about everything, from politics to fashion to self-love. And the name of her blog was inspired by an Italian wine called Tignanello, according to Elle. While much of the content of her blog revolved around food, fashion, travel, and interviews with inspiring women, Meghan did not shy away from difficult topics. It's really just about an inspired lifestyle. In one archived post titled Champions of Change, she wrote about her mother's experience with racism. She detailed how her mother and grandparents were forced to eat outside of a restaurant because they were black. She wrote in the post, It reminds me of how young our country is, how far we've come and how far we still have to come. It makes me think of the countless black jokes people have shared in front of me, not realizing I am mixed, unaware that I am the ethnically ambiguous fly on the wall. In April 2017, seven months before Meghan became engaged to Prince Harry, she shut the TIG down, leaving readers with a sweet and heartfelt final message which concluded with, Above all, don't ever forget your worth. As I've told you time and time again, you, my sweet friend, you are enough. But don't be too sad if you are one of the many people mourning the end of the TIG. Now that she's no longer a working member of the royal family, some have speculated that she could be reactivating the blog in the future. Meghan Markle played the role of Rachel, the powerhouse paralegal turned lawyer on USA's Suits. And Rachel is actually Meghan's real first name. I was born Rachel Meghan Markle, but my parent, I know, it's kismet. <laughs> The two share more than just a name, though. Meghan told Marie Claire that she relates to the character's personal qualities, too, saying, So automatically, Rachel and I very similar, ambitious, driven, and always trying to take the bull by its horns. She added that she and Rachel Zane also share a tendency to be hard on themselves. Meghan also shared that much of her character's wardrobe consisted of pieces she'd wear in her real life. She told Marie Claire, Rachel is like the ultimate best friend, who has a closet that I always borrow things from in my personal life. She and her on-screen character also share the same jewelry, including family heirlooms like one of her grandmother's bracelets. Meghan's involvement in the advancement of women's rights is a key part of who she is. From speaking out against her character's overt sexualization on suits to advocating for women and girls' education, she has made it a point to invest her time in promoting gender equality. Women are fighting greasy pots and pans. After seeing a commercial on TV that implied that it was a woman's job to wash the dishes, 11-year-old Meghan Markle wrote to Procter & Gamble about their sexist advertising, according to People. Her letter apparently made an impact because days later the commercial was re-aired minus the sexism. People are fighting greasy pots and pans with Ivory Clear. 
Since then, she has continued to advocate for women's rights, working with organizations like UN Women and World Vision. And though her name is inextricably linked to her husband's, Meghan has made it clear that she stands firm in her own personal identity. In a 2019 speech in South Africa, for example, she stated, On one personal note, may I just say that while I am here with my husband as a member of the royal family, I want you to know that for me, I am here as a mother, as a wife, as a woman, as a woman of color, and as your sister. I am here with you, and I am here for you. You can really make a difference for not just yourself, but lots of other people.